Hi and welcome to MTG CubeTube. My name is Short, and this is part 4 of a 5 part video series in which we are building a budget friendly Synergy Cube entirely from scratch. For a quick summary of our process, check out the first 2 minutes of the previous video, but the short version of it is that we are building a 360 card cube that focuses on the 10 color pairs that will each have a somewhat linear theme. We will try to keep the budget for this cube to under 500 US dollar using the MCG Goldfish deck pricer. Our method for selecting cards is to build core collections of 24 cards for each guild that support the guild theme, and in the final episode, which is the next one, we choose the remaining 120 cards, 45 lands, 25 colorless cards, and an additional 10 non-guild specific cards of each of the 5 colors. We started a wish list of cards that could be used for this. In the previous video, we decided on Go White Aggro as the strategy for Boros, but we have yet to choose the cards for the Boros collection, so we will do that right now. After that, we will choose the strategies for Simic and Gruul, and for those we will use a different approach than for the other guilds, but we will get to that later. So, the strategy for Boros is Go White Aggro, which basically means aggressive creatures, token makers, and ways to make sure that those creatures can keep attacking, even when opponents try to gum up the battlefield. To enable Go White Aggro decks to keep up the pressure, we can turn to good old fashioned removal, evasion, falter effects that prevent opposing creatures from blocking, and mass pump effects or combat tricks. Because we need a critical mass of creatures, we will especially be looking for effects of these types that are attached to creatures. Let's start by trying to find a good creature curve that covers many of these bases, and then see which types of cards we still need to round out this collection. If we allocate 17 of our 24 slots to creatures and token makers, a good aggressive curve would look like this. So this is 4 1 drops, 6 2 drops, etc. White has a surprising amount of 1 drops that are relevant for this strategy. Making tokens, giving evasion, tapping blockers, it's all here, and especially Usher of the Fallen from Kaldheim was a real gift for this cube. The red 1 drops have less synergy with the theme, but are still fine aggressive dorks, and Figure of Destiny is an auto include because it's a great card and quality hybrid cards are hard to come by. So let's include these four, leaving out Mother of Runes because she's a bit on the expensive side, as is Giver of Runes. We're adding 10 additional cards for each color that are not guild specific in the next video, so it's possible that a card like Goblin Guide could still make it into the cube, especially if we find that red needs more 1 drops. There are quite a few 2 drops that either come with 2 bodies or that make tokens in some other way, or that come with a falter like effect, an evasive element or a mass pump ability attached. These multicolor 2 drops do all of the above and would be good signpost cards, but we're not going to include any of them because multicolor 2 drops often end up being awkward on players' mana. In aggressive decks, you want your 2 drops to be easy to cast in order to curve out, and therefore I'd rather have monocolor 2 drops. I use my multicolor slots for cards a bit higher on the mana curve. This also allows Boros players to lean more heavily towards either white or red and use the other as a secondary color or even only to splash a few high impact cards. I also want to rule out cards like these because without tribal synergies or an overload of mass pump effects, just making two 1 1s is simply not powerful enough. With Kairi Zev and Young Pyromancer already in the cube, these are the best fitting 2 drops I could find. I'm not a fan of the double white in Precinct Captain's mana cost for the same reason that I don't like multicolor 2 drops, but this is such a powerful option for a base white deck that I don't want to cut it. Note that I am not too worried about color balance here. We'll look at the mana curve for each color when we make the last few tweaks to the cube, and we don't need to strive for perfect balance for each point in the mana curve within the guild collection. For 3 drops, there are 3 cards that immediately jump to mind for the Boros strategy. Legion Warboss, Goblin Rebel Master, and Brimas. All three of these are go white strategies all by themselves and can take over games very quickly if left unchecked. The bad news is that Brimas is very popular among commander players and therefore has a price tag well outside our budget. History of Banalia is also a good option for white and we already discussed PNLR when choosing cards for Rakdos and she fits the Boros strategy pretty well. For our 4 drops and 5 drop, I like Hellrider, Pia and Kieran, and Siege Gang Commander. All three of these are great to get those last points of damage in if opponents manage to stabilize, and P and K and SGC are both armies in a can. If you're not bound to a strict budget and are supporting Go White Aggro in your cube, then these Planeswalkers along with Hero of Bladehold could be great options too, but for us they are out of budget range. 
So after that, this is what our collection looks like so far, and that leaves room for four multicolor cards, one hybrid card, and two white cards. After a simple scryfall search on multicolor white red cards, I came to this collection of cards that fit our theme, our budget, and are close enough to this cube's power level. The four creatures and the four token makers would have to replace some of the creatures that we already settled on, unless we choose to go over our 17 creature slots. Aurelia is cool and iconic and powerful, so I'd like to make room for her, but the other options I don't like more than the creatures that we already chose, though I do like Tajik and Heroic Reinforcements. Goblin Trenches and Assemble the Legion are both cool cards, but are more at home as win conditions in Control decks than in Boros Aggro. Instead, let's use our remaining multicolor slots on non-creature spells. In Lightning Helix we have a great removal spell and it's a nice iconic card to boot. Aurelia's Fury is a nice combination of removal, the option to temporarily tap down an army of blockers and can also go face for those last points of damage. And finally, Showdown of the Skulls is an awesome way for Boros decks to reload in case an opponent survives the early game. Though I'm convinced that this group of multicolor cards would play really well in the strategy, we should also recognize that these are maybe not the most clear signpost cards for Go White Aggro. Luckily, our monocolored cards quite clearly point players in the right direction, so I think we can get away with it. If we would be worried about this, we could swap Showdown for Heroic Reinforcements and Lightning Helix for Tajik, but I'm more happy with the cards we selected, so let's not. Our options for hybrid cards are pretty thin as always, especially when you take into consideration that we don't really want hybrid cards that are secretly Boros-only cards, like Reckoner and Nobilis of War. As I explained in the first video of this series, the reason we are okay to include two hybrid cards on top of four multicolor cards is that hybrid cards are flexible in which colors can play them, but for cards with triple or more hybrid symbols in their cost, that's simply not the case. Figure of Destiny's activation costs already kind of break that rule, but it's such a perfect one-drop that I decided to look the other way. So the only real option here is Rise of the Hobgoblins, which we could reluctantly include. So this is what we look like now, and if we wanted more spells, we should remove one of the four drops for the Aurelia that we just added. But let's just keep the creatures, and when we're adding the last 10 cards for red, and maybe also for white, we probably use more of those slots on spells than on creatures. I'm still unhappy with that Rise of the Hobgoblins, so let's maybe think of something better. First though, let's decide on those two white cards that we still have room for. What we're still lacking here are some mass pump effects or maybe a card like Brave the Elements. Of the Anthem effects I like both Heliod cards and of the many one-shot effects of this type I like Pride of Conquerors the most. We have two card slots left, so let's choose Spear of Heliod as our Anthem effect, Pride of Conquerors as our one-shot mass pump effect, but let's also replace that Rise of the Hobgoblins with Rally the Peasants because I don't want to adhere to our two hybrid card rule enough to include a card that I'm actually unhappy with, and if you squint real hard, a monocolored card with an off-color flashback cost is close to a hybrid mana card, right? Well, not really, but let's just go with it anyway. That heraldic banner can go on the wishlist for our artifact selection, and that would give us four mass pump effects total, which should be plenty. So this is the resulting Boros collection, and according to the deck pricer, this comes in at just above $24, which is perfectly on budget. From the wishlist, we can remove these three cards, and I'd like to add these six. For Gru and Simic, we're going to do things a bit differently from how we've approached the other guilds. When trying to come up with possible guild strategies for Simic, I didn't get much further than plus one plus one counters that we already use for Celestnia, ramp and or multicolor, and some tribal options with minimal support. For Gruul, it's not much better. Ramp, plus one plus one counters, power four or greater, nothing here that really appeals to me. I tried to list the limited archetypes from sets over the years and that confirmed what I thought. Especially these two guilds sometimes either have simply no clear identity, are just ramp, maybe focusing on multicolor, or have the most niche strategies like Defenders, Kicker, Snow, or lands in graveyard and enrage that don't actually have much support outside of one or two sets. So instead of focusing these two guilds each on their own thing, let's choose ramp as an overarching theme for both guilds and next to that we'll include some smaller synergy packages that consist mainly of some build rounds with the necessary enablers. In Simic we can include a small flash package with Brineborn Cutthroat and Nightpack Ambusher as payoffs for only casting spells on an opponent's turn and four support cards that enable this kind of play pattern. 
This is clearly not a full strategy, but I believe there are enough other instant speed cards in the cube to make building around Nightback Embouchure a viable option. Tradewind Rider and Prime Speaker Venifar are two creatures that work really well with untap effects to activate their ability more than once per turn, and this synergy package is built around them. Hybrid Kiora and Kiora's Follower can both untap these four drops, but they are also fine ramp cards outside of untap synergies. Profit is already part of the Flash package and works really well with Tradewind Rider. And finally, Fertile Ground is just a good ramp card, but it gets much better if you can untap the land that it's on. Two other build arounds that we should mention here are Opposition and Birthing Pot. These are cube staples that often, but not exclusively, find homes in Simic decks, but that we can't consider for this cube because, according to the MTG Goldfish deck pricer, they both cost over 10 US dollars. If we had set a budget in euros using magic card market prices, they would have probably made it in though. Since we already included Venifar, this cube would certainly be a great home for Birthing Pod as well. Gruul often cares about having big creatures, and since many red and green creatures fit that profile anyway, having some payoffs for going large can be nice for players to try and build around. Of these, Garruk's Uprising needs the most support to be good, while the others don't need a lot to pay a player off and the first her own game should have already been in the Celestia collection for this cube anyway, so this neatly corrects that oversight. Kiora is already part of the Untap package, so there's some nice overlap as well. Landfall is another classic Gruul-centered keyword, and of course putting lands into play also fits well with the overall ramp strategy. Avenger and Phyleth are the great payoffs here, with most other cards in this group enabling Landfall, and Cavalier is both something to ramp into, a ramp card to get to even bigger things, and it also is a nice enabler for the Golgari self-mill strategy. And last but not least, I'd like to include a small Elementals package with Creeping Trailblazer and Risen Reef as payoffs, and Master of Waves, Tilonali Summoner and Chandra Flamecaller as the most prominent enablers. And note that we already have three Mana Chandra and Young Pyromancer in a cube that both make Elemental tokens as well. These are the other Elementals that are in the cube so far, and when selecting the leftover cards for the Gruul and Simic collections, we'll lean towards Elementals where possible. Both payoffs here actually don't need very many other Elementals to be good. Simply combine them with one of the cards that make Elemental tokens already makes them pop off. But having Tribal payoffs will make people think that Tribal Elementals is a thing, so it's best to have enough other Elementals in the cube to cater to those expectations. So this is the Simic collection we have made so far and we have room left for three more blue cards, and I want those to be ramp payoffs, but also preferably interactive cards that can be cast at instant speed for the flash deck. These three cards fit that build perfectly, and though Mystic Confluence might immediately be the best card in this cube, let's put it in now and worry about that later. Instead of Frost Titan, we would have preferred Torrential Gear Hulk for flash synergies, but it's a bit on the expensive side, so let's add that to the wish list and see later if we have room in the budget for it. For the 7 green cards to round out this collection, we want 4 ramp spells, and then a 5, a 6 and a 7 drop to ramp into, and to keep the Prime Speaker Venifar dream alive. If we can find elementals, that would be great. Arba Elf is cute with fertile ground, so it gets a nod over cards like Elfish Mystic. For our ramp payoffs, Wispwood Elemental is just one of the most powerful 5 drops for cube, and it's an elemental. Green Warden is not among my favorite 6 drops for cube, but most of the more appealing options like Primeval Titan or Vorinclex simply don't fit our budget, and at least Green Warden is an elemental, works well with Vanifar, and also fits what Golgari is doing. And finally Hornet Queen is a great curve topper. The last card for this collection should be a hybrid card, but to stay on brand, let's not actually include a second hybrid card, because instead I'd like to use that slot to add Genesis Ultimatum to the cube. It's a great ramp payoff, it shows that in this cube Gruul and Simic are connected, and we're not really missing out on a great hybrid card anyway. This then is the complete Simic collection, and according to MTG Goldfish, that is a bit over $30, which is about what we'd like our average per guild collection to be. To the wishlist, I'd like to add Lanoir Visionary, Acidic Slime and Threat Tusk. These are all great cards in a mid-rangey ramp strategy, and they are also excellent with Prime Speaker Venifar, and with the Blink cards in our Azorius collection. Murpha Gluter is another thing that works with our untap package, and we probably don't have the budget for Torrential Gear Hulk, but if we do, we'd love to include it. This is the Cruel collection we've made so far, and that leaves us with four red cards to find, one green card and two hybrid cards. The only hybrid card that got me excited enough to include is Gigantha, so let's just add an extra green card instead of the second hybrid card. 
Though mana dorks are usually the domain of green, I like to add some actual red ramp creatures, and these three should work well with what we're doing. I think we are close to enough elementals to make Smoke Braider good, and turn 2 Smoke Braider into turn 3 Gigantha and turn 4 Genesis Ultimatum should be on people's bucket list. As heavy hitters, I like Glorybringer and Inferno Titan that are both cube staples and great to ramp into. I don't want to cut either, but we only have room for one more red card, so let's move Runaway Steamkin to the wishlist, assuming we'll find room for it in the 10 generic red cards, and then include both Glorybringer and Inferno Titan. For the last two green cards, I'd like at least one additional Mana Elf, and then one of these two 4 drops that both fit the Ferocious theme and are great ways to use excess mana. Let's go with the Elemental for tribal reasons and add Polukronos to the wishlist in case we end up needing more green 4 drops. So this then is the final Gruul collection, and according to the deck pricer, that is a bit under 25 US dollars, so that is again nicely within budget. To the wishlist, we're adding the Porukonos and Steamkin that we already talked about, but I'd also like to add these two artifacts to ramp into, both cube staples and awesome cards, as well as these two adventure creatures that I came across when I was searching for 3 drops that worked well with the Size Matters cards, and that are both just great cards that would fit really well in this queue. Finally, let's add Masked Vandal, because we might want to add some artifact and enchantment destruction to the final green cards, and this does that while also adding to the elemental count. And that rounds up this episode. To quickly recap, of our 360 card cube, we have so far selected 240 cards by building 10 24 card guild packages. We're doing okay on budget, having spent around $320 out of our $500 budget, and in the next episode we will select the remaining 120 cards that will include 50 monocolored cards, 45 lands and 25 colorless or artifact cards. My goal is to have that video out in around 2 weeks, but no promises. I've updated the cube list on Cube Cobra, and you can find the link to that in the video description. As always, please feel free to like this if you like this, to comment if you have something to say or ask, and to subscribe if you want to be notified when the next video comes out. Thanks a lot for watching, and see you next time.